the back? Yeah. I am incredibly interested. Oh, the sound So now we're going to break up into groups to talk about game strategy and how we're going to play the game this year. Pretty game. Then they have to do this four <laughs> second <laughs> training back to it. And then we said another two seconds to go back and we said we're getting a cargo this time, right? Now we're breaking up into subgroups to go through the um, mechanisms needed to fulfill that strategy. And it would have to be like smaller than 30 inches. <laughs> So now I want the clamp face. We're testing to see if this will hold on to the uh, disc. Okay. Now we take it over. We are prototyping a mechanism to intake the balls. We're playing with the different types of wheels to see which one is better. Once you have something that you think is working pretty well, start playing with it with respect to bumpers. Because you can use the bumpers as a funnel. We're using an old machine to like repurpose the 2016 intake. What if we change the wheels and change them to squishy, squishy noodle wheels? These guys yeah. are vectored intake wheels, vectored meaning that they'll drag the ball inward. Our agenda, we have CAD for the drivetrain of the robot, elevator, which is hopefully going to be on the robot, and then general architecture, which just kind of means how things go together, and there will be a code meeting for those of you who are coders. Um. Also, for awards, people who are interested, so if you could just come talk to me. I think we need a bigger hole. You can see how this is kind of deforming, trying to make that small one. These need to be longer. Yeah. Like this? We're going to try to grab Our goal for the robot is to be light and fast. We need to use the data that we've gotten from that prototyping to help inform our decisions. Yeah. Test to make sure it works. Mm -hmm. Put wheels on it. We turn. Try it at an angle. We're prototyping the suction cup with ground intake and we're changing the dis distance and the angle. Last one, 13 and a half. A little bit, a little bit. Before. on the modified suction cup where we have rollers on the outside so that way when we hit the edge of the ball it'll roll into the ball instead of being stuck and peeled on the outside like the original suction cup was. We are testing the angles and distances to optimize our suction cup
We have a you know, superstructure, we have a drive train, these are all things that are put where. But in order to have that discussion, we need to understand how this works and how this all ties together. Yeah? Don't put on the on the plan. Plan. So it's not a separate thing? Uh, I don't think no, so. I'm, I'm just doing it on the slash slash. Do you know what a trapezoidal motion profile is? No. Oh, yeah. Just say I asked you to do that. Can you do that? Uh, no. Yeah, that's kind of rough. Can you do this? Yeah. Well, it would clap with you all. Can you? Um, not exactly. Why? Well, because if you want to go to the you're going to sustain the Correct. And you tell it, okay, how, what's this peak and what's the slope of that line? And then and it goes and solves. What we already have that makes it. Okay. okay. Fun little bit of math. start writing a pseudocode. Uh, if anybody that is not familiar with what a pseudocode is, it's sort of like dummy code that doesn't actually run on a computer. If I can Okay. And then wrist. Yeah. Between this space here and this space here. It's over centered hand. So that as you push okay. harder it's only going to reinforce and push against that. Okay. Sure. Once we do those two things, I can come in the back here and like pocket it out with like ribs. <laughs> we are inspecting these parts to see if they're made correctly by looking at the drawing and measuring them. In this case, the tolerance are within five thousandths of an inch for the shafts that are going outside of the wheel on the drive frame. We're fabricating parts for the robot drivetrain side rails using the CNC router. Um, tomorrow from 7.30 to 9, we have our leadership meeting, which is open to anyone. Um, on Friday, we have a meeting from 2.35 until 10, um, and we'll have our status meeting at 8 o'clock. And then on Saturday, we have our meeting from 12 until 10. So today, I'll, I guess we'll be talking about the vertical band off and how important it is to be safe on the vertical band off. Okay, so if square was the symbol name, um, we would have two squares. That would not work. Okay. okay. So would that be like I, had, I had created two functions with yeah, the same, with the same name? name? That's okay. why we need to put the define guards on all your headers. Yeah. And this is C++, not Python, so we care. Uh -huh. We're trying to eke every last bit of performance out of this processor. Oh, here? So this is on master. That's a Garrett merge commit I recognize. Okay. And that's your commit. There's nothing in between, which means that you're good. Okay. Welcome to the week three status meeting. Um, yeah. Three weeks down, three weeks to go. Two real focus points for us is that the router's always going to be running, and that we need to make special care into not making scrap. Roughly 50% of the things that we cut on the router have been scrap. And How do we not cut scrap? I'll get there, but the simple answer is uh, two people working on everything, so that way you have somebody to double check. And say you're working on the drive space, whoever helps CAD the drive space, talk to them about machining. Everyone makes mistakes sometimes. We're really just trying to avoid making the same mistake multiple times. I am receiving parts and checking their part numbers against the purchase list. <coughs> uh, we're putting the custom parts in the kits to make assembly easier. Play transmission outside play. Yep. So and the two encoders. Eighteen. Make sure you got it in there. There you go. All right, now let's see how you did. There you go. You want to get that all the way back. There you go. Yep. Yeah. Way to go. Look at that. You can that one. Yeah. You're trying to hit on the inner race, right? Yeah. Really, it's just that it needs to not touch the outer race, so it's better if it overlaps a little bit. Those brushes, the springy bits, they slide over to the next pair, and you energize the next set of coils, and your magnetic field's this way, and it still wants to rotate, and your magnetic field just keeps moves with it. So that way you have a force, so you get torque out of it. Welcome to the 2019 mid-season design overview. Game pieces on all levels, Developing vision, because there are a lot of vision targets on the field to allow you to align semi-automatically. 
the center wheels are going to be tread, and that's going to help us not sl slip side to side in auto. So if your intake is out and you're hit, your intake will like wobble and then <laughs> go back into place instead of exploding. And then there's a drum. So there's a, a big printed rotating drum on it that's driven by a gearbox at the bottom. And then there's a string that goes up to the top of the grounded stage, down to the bottom of the first stage, up to the top of the first stage, and then it terminates on the carriage. So suction cups are the uh, current theory, I guess, to why we're, how we're going to be holding both the ball and a disc with the same mechanism. Um, so from the image you can see that we've tested 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Uh, we're on version 14, um, working on version 15 this weekend. reason why we're doing suction cups, aside from being able to grab both a uh, hatch panel and um, the ball, is that we want to be able to get the ball as fast as possible, run in, grab a ball, have control of the ball, and then leave. And suction cups are really good at this because they only need to control one face of an object. They don't need to go around an object to hold it. I'm soldering uh, connectors onto this board, which is going to take signals from the camera and then process them and send them to the rubber reel. I am assembling the transmission to the drive van. So the ones that go on here are 220. Yeah, it's supposed to be trying. So are these crimps? This is a list of everything that we have to do before we can bring up the first robot. The thought process with this is if you want a job, you come to the list, you find a thing that you think you can do, you find the person who is associated with it, nobody, then put yourself down, then you do that, once you finish, you check it off, you get another job, and that way we're all working towards the common goal of finishing one robot. Where are you at right now? Doing the mag wires. Do you need any anything to continue doing that? A few people would help. Okay, sweet. We can, we can give you those. Yeah, it's kind of hard to get them too close because the this wire is... Yeah, that's like right great. Is that? Yeah. I'm going to do one to 44. It's exactly in the middle. Okay. Let's do this. We want to go from position A to position B, but we want to do it where velocity only changes a certain rate. I can't so we just do that. Because that's... Rocket okay. cycles are going to be slower. Yeah. They're just it naturally going to be slower. And so, because either you turn slower because you're tippy or you wait. Yeah. Ethan, do you have a status on the second robot? Soon sensors and motors uh, can getting connected. You now have a suction cup that works. Yay. Awesome. Anybody that's interested in helping with the rest of the awards, um, we have a video to make, a presentation, um, documentation. We're going to meet at 2.30 in... We're assembling the camera cases and putting the IR lenses on. I am making part of the rocket so that the team can then practice with their prototypes. So these are like number tens, maybe. We want maybe number sixes or eights about the same length.
So we have in the screw selection over there. Because you had done it with where you could grab a ball or you could grab. Oh, this is a separate crack. solenoid for the. Oh, so this is it's connecting this hose to this hose, or it's connecting this hose to here. So if you have a ball, though, it's going to vent to atmosphere. It's going to vent through the other suction cup. When you pick a corner, it's making the parallel pipe put from that corner to wherever you draw it to. So let's try that. Let's click on that corner. Just for sure. And then you can cut it out. Good choice. We didn't save the assembly, did we? Mm -hmm. All right, let's save the assembly right now before we go any further. We're going to put a 2 by 4 from here all the way across through that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Why are we doing that? So it's not going to by itself. Yeah, and we're and creating a structure instead of that real thin, um, right? Yeah. Do it. You got it. And your normal, your normal ball. If we're always going to do this, then this is where you want to be. That's true. Then yeah. If you want to compromise, this is where you want to be. I would say come up with some edge. Um, if you, if you back up, up right now, I think this is going to be You need to make sure that it, like, oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Tyler, let's play with these. All right. I lowered this by 10 feet. Um, I'm going to be able to do it. Thank you. 
This talk is on 3D printing, how to effectively utilize the MarkForge printers. Hi, um, we're here to talk about the 2019 robot. 971 scouting and strategy case studies. So this is an overview of what I'm going to be going through today. FRC judging, specifically how you can kind of maximize your submissions and the content that you're delivering to judges. The point of this talk is just to, let you, to help you figure out ways to tell your story. I'm on the 971 team as a mentor. Hey, good morning, everybody. So some of the topics that we're going to go through is team organization. A control system is, a, uh, is something that modifies your system dynamics to make your system stable. My bread and butter is strategic design and detail design, the way I think about um, the way the games are analyzed and robot design. We're going to go through the general process, like how we do things, and then we're going to go more in depth on how we manufacture it. Well, this is uh, greatly simplified. It shows some of the overall aspects that go into, into our coding layout. The I'm going to go over today is kind of covering some of the, I guess, best practices. If we wanted to build something that's cube-like, we would build off of this and put in holes and stuff until we can either 3D print it or cut it on the router or turn it down on the lathe. Really, you just need to show up and be willing to learn. So maybe a little bit about how we're using it. C++ and Python, as you said, and I think it's open source. Start doing that, and then channel leads into doing the work and. Hi there, I'm 
expecting. Oh, that's probably not a good start. <laughs>